Okay. One of the most beautiful things about writing is you're able to incorporate your beliefs and your ideas into your story. We're going to talk about metaphors in writing and how powerful metaphors can be in writing. Especially when, when a reader gets what you're talking about and, and, and you're able to show something in your story that makes the reader think and it makes the reader say, oh, okay. So, okay, so again, I, I, uh, I study a lot of my storytelling. For th I've been studying storytelling for 30 years. I've written four screenplays. I've recorded three poetry CDs, and I've written three books. Um, so I'm very experienced at this, and this is how I've had success doing the things that I have done. So, okay, so Chad Bo Chad, uh, Chadwick Boseman last movie Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, written by August Wilson, who is a playwright. Uh, August Wilson is a playwright, but they turned his play into a movie called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It's on Netflix. So in that movie, you have a group, you have uh, you have a band, a blues band, I believe. It's a blues band, and then you have a character named Levy. Levy. It's played by Chad Chadwick Baldwin. People are gonna be mad at me for messing up his man, name, but I I apologize. Uh, so Levy, he gets to the studio to record a song with the band um, in the movie with the band gets to the studio, and there is this door in the basement of the studio that Levy had never noticed before in his previous time they're recording. You know, and, and he, he, he doesn't recognize the door, so he constantly tries to get through the door. He has a hard time opening the door. And this happens throughout the story where he constantly tries to get through this door. He constantly tries to get through this door and tries to get in because he swears that the door wasn't there before, before, the, uh, before, he had, before the previous time he went to, the, to that studio. But at the same time, Levy is very ambitious. Levy wants to do his own thing. And he's a bit cocky in terms of he wants to get his own band. He wants to do his own music. And he constantly clashed with the, with the singer of the band, which is played by, by Viola Davis. But the door represents his cockiness. The door that he's trying to break into is the same as his character trying to break into being a leader, being, being, being ahead of his own band. It, it represents the same thing. It's a metaphor. So, Levy, Levy is very disrespectful to the... Um, he appears to be disrespectful to the other band members and the lead singer. And finally, when things come to a head, he gets fired from that band. So once he gets fired, he doesn't mind his cocky because he's believing he's going to build his own band and that uh, the, the record label executive had promised him that he would let Levy record these songs. So Levy's feeling real good, like, why the hell with this band? I'm going to do my own thing. But when he gets fired from the band, he goes back downstairs, then the studio, he goes back down to the basement, and he, he's determined to break through this door. He finally breaks through the door, and when he breaks through the door, it's a brick wall. And what, that's, what that basically, the metaphor in that is that the door led him to nowhere. And I think at that moment, that's, and at, in the same moment, or maybe in the previous scene before that, the record executive decided not to record his songs. So now he has nothing. Uh, now, now, now he's trying, now he's upset because not only his cockiness, not only um, did he not get to record his songs and not only did he, did he not get a chance to build his own band, but the door he went through, they had been trying to break through the whole session, the whole time he was in the studio, the door just led to nowhere, which was a metaphor to what he was going through in the present moment. So basically, I hope I explained it right. Basically, metaphors are very, they're not overshadowed. They don't overshadow the story. But the, the, when you add the small, teeny 
tiny little thing to a story, it it it, it really enhances that story, and it really uh, allows uh, p readers to be like, oh yeah, you know what? That's what that meant. You know, it, it just enhances your ability to tell the story. It en it enhances the reader's mind. And and is is metaphoric, and 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 it shows you as a good person that you know that can write. And I think that it's the little things like that that separate the good writers from the great writers. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go through a very short another scenario. August Wilson, the same person who wrote Black uh, Mars Black Bottom, is also the same guy that wrote. Fences, the movie with Denzel Washington in it. Now, this don't take a whole lot of explaining, but the reason why it's called Fences is because the main character in that uh, movie is building a fence, which is Denzel's character. He's building a fence. But, as the story goes on, you start to really understand that the fence is being built more psychologically because Denzel's character was afraid of the world and was upset with the world. So he's, he's in so many ways trapping himself inside the fence, building it around his house. And he's trapping his family in there. And he, he, he's constricting them to his ideas about life and the way he thinks that his son should live, the way he thinks his life should live, what his wife should live, and how he wants to be. The fence represents a metaphor of how his life is. He feels trapped. He feels trapped and he expresses this in the movie. He feels trapped, but that's another idea of a metaphor. He the fence, the movie's called Fences, but it's a deeper, it's deeper than just fences. So creating a powerful metaphor is very, very important uh, if you are able to wiggle that in there without it being obvious. And so so by the time they really get to the end of your book, they're able to say, Oh, wow. Oh, that's what... The, how many times have you seen a movie that's like, wow. You watch it two or three times, then it finally hits you like, Oh, that's what that means. I get it now. It just, what it really does, it really, really makes the reader uh, or or audience or whatever you want to call it, 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 it really makes them connect with your story on a more spiritual level, deeper level than just actually a story. So just keep that in mind. Uh, good metaphors, but they don't have to be nothing that overshadows the story, but just something very, very simple. I'm D-Revolution. Subscribe and like my page. I've written three books, four screenplays, recorded three poetry CDs. I've been studying and storytelling for 30 years. Follow my page. And I guarantee you, by the time you watch my videos, you will have a, a clear, clearer idea on how to tell a story and how to write a story. We're going to cover so many things, even after you write the book, how to sell the book, how to market the book. Um, I'm still learning. Um, as I just released, well, I haven't even released my third book yet, but it's coming out. Uh, just learning things, how to market and, and, and promote your book, different things like that. So you need to follow me if you want to get ahead of the game. I'm, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been a spoken word artist for 20 years. I've learned how to market myself, and I learned how to, how to do things. And I also have a mentorship. If, if, if you're interested in being having a personal mentorship with me, all you do need all you need to do is email me at blackbooksforus at gmail dot com. Blackbooks for us F O R us at gmail dot com. If you want a personal mentorship to get an understanding of some things. I do I do mentor several authors and several spoken word artists and poets. Anyway, that's the end of my video. Hope you have, guys have a great day.